Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. As you can see, we are outside again. Um, uh, I don't know if this is showing twice on here or what. Um, there's a lot of reflection going on. Um, but we are back with chapter five. I uh, can't believe it's been a month already since I've been reading this. Uh, Memoirs of a Birth Mother by me. Um, so yeah, let me get into reading it. Uh, I will post a link below where you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble below. And I'm outside today. It's a beautiful day. It's already getting a little sticky and hot. It's 11 a.m. Um, the birds are chirping. I feel very lighthearted today. So let's get into this. Chapter 5. I can't even begin to tell you what the weather was like on that day, the day I gave birth to my daughter. I was 19, living in a town thousands of miles away from everyone I knew and loved, and I was terrified. I had been watching my stomach grow day by agonizing day, not knowing what I was going to do. To top it all off, I had her father to contend with, a person I thought I would spend the rest of my life with, a person I thought I would end up it that would end the misery I grew up with and just love me. I was very, very wrong. The day I realized I was pregnant, I was scared but happy at the same time. My na naive immaturity didn't realize the sheer hell I was about to go through. I was in love, in love with a man a little older than me, a man that I now realize could never give me what I needed. It wasn't that he didn't love me. I think part of him did love me. In his own twisted way. You know the kind of love that will eventually kill you. It was as if he saw me coming. With all my shiny newness and eager to set the world afire. Not knowing that the big bad wolf already had me in his sights. The signs were all there that he was not the perfect man he portrayed himself to be. By the time I found out I was pregnant, however, it was too late. I was just a girl in love, and there was no escaping this man. The biggest sign was his parents. I followed what at the time I thought was the love of my life in the middle of the night on foot to the next town over to stay at his mother's house. Every mother I've ever met loves me, and this time was no different. How ironic is it that since my very own mother never once showed me an ounce of love, I had just gotten fired from yet another job because the boyfriend once again showed his ass there. We had lost our place and were living in a shelter. This became the pattern of my life. We showed up tired and achy from the long walk. She welcomed us in, but with just a smidge of hostility I wasn't sure about. She was beautiful, a five-foot Italian spitfire if I ever saw one, and I instantly loved her. However, she did talk down to her son quite a bit, and it just made me think of my own issues with my mother. Instead of looking more closely as to why she said the things she did about her own child, I sided with him and was like, oh, you poor thing, when what I should have been doing was running for the hills. Yet at this point in our relationship, he hadn't yet shown me the monster he truly was. And I just thought, man, we both have mother issues. I just felt sorry for him gullible little girl. A few days after we were there, I met his grandmother and concluded that his mother's side of the family anyway was just lovely. His grandmother reminded me of my own grandmother that in just another year would pass away. She spoke her mind, danced to the beat of her own drummer, and she was the salt of the earth good. She was one of those rare people that even if she didn't have it to give, to give would have given you the shirt off her back all wrapped up in an Italian heritage. A week or so went by when his mother that owned her own mailing press let us work the mailing press for some extra cash, and while it was fun, she began telling me stories of her unruly son and even begged me to leave him out of fear that he would screw up my life. She even offered to kick him out and let me live with her until I got on my feet on the ground. All I could think was, how could she hate her son this much? Little did I know, she was just a mother looking out for me. 
Somewhere in those couple of weeks, she began speaking of his child and of how she didn't get to see him because of my boyfriend had screwed up the relationship with his son's mother. I found this odd, as it was the first time I had heard that he already had a child. I was shocked to say the least, and she then continued to say things about her son like what a loser he was, and he had had a child out of wedlock, and it was a sin, and so on and so on. My head was swimming with all this new information. I was terrified as I myself had just found out I was pregnant with his child. And I keep getting bit back there. And there's cars going by. Sorry. Within that, I just found out that I was pregnant with his child within that week. I was ashamed and couldn't tell her that her son that had in fact knocked up yet another girl. Out of wedlock, of course. So I stayed silent. I refused to have her look at me the way she looked at her own son. After all, I had seen that look way too many times in my mother's eyes. He showed me a picture of his son after I confronted him, and an old idiot me took the lie at face value when he said he didn't tell me because he cared about me and was afraid he would lose me if he told me he had a kid. Yeah, right. I met his father shortly after this. I learned that he was separated from his wife due to his violent and abusive tendencies. While his mother was strikingly beautiful and kind, his father was the exact opposite. He was a six-foot-plus pillar and a full-blooded Irishman. To say he was intimidating would have been an understatement. The very first and only time I met him, I almost peed myself. His voice bellowed into the house, already screaming at his piece of shit son, as he liked to say, and I just reverted back to when I lived at home. I tried anything I could to make myself invisible once again. This man scared the crap out of me. He was tall. He was proud. He was menacing. With his reddish blonde hair and his towering form, who wouldn't be? If I thought his mother had nothing good to say about him, his father was much better. I knew from the moment we met that father and son did not get along at all. Me being the naive little girl, once again, all I could think was, how could someone so decent come from something so terrifying? Idiot. After this confrontation, I knew it was only a matter of time before we would get kicked out of his house and back into the streets looking for a home, and now I had a baby to worry about, too. My instincts were right. It only took his mother a couple of days to come to us and say, Hey, I need you guys out of the house. With still no clue that I was pregnant with what would be her fourth grandchild, I continued to worry about my baby in silence, something that quickly became the theme in my life. Someone had the grand idea that we should get on a Greyhound uh, bus and his mother even offered to buy us the tickets to an unknown destination just so she could get her son out of town and away from the family. Wow. Please, somebody say, here's your sign, dumbass. I knew with all her Catholic talk that I couldn't tell his mother about the baby and disrupt their lives any further. And since I had burned a bridge with my father, well, the boyfriend had anyway. I knew I couldn't go back to my dad with my tail tucked between my legs either, and I wouldn't want to. And I would have died a thousand deaths before I ever stooped to calling my mother. So that left really only one choice to make. Follow him to parts unknown while carrying his child. I remember the moment like it was yesterday. The three of us standing in the bus terminal. She was there, I think, to make sure her son got on the bus and didn't come back. I was terrified of what the future held for me and my child. And he just seemed to be along for the ride. His mother pulled me aside just before we left with pleading in her eyes, begging me to stay with her to please not follow her son into oblivion. But as I said before, I felt I had no other option. And so I got on the bus with him. After all, I loved him, didn't I? She begged me not to go with him, but I did anyway. As I said earlier, one split decision can change everything. At this point, I recognized that he was broken, or maybe it was the first time I saw myself mirrored in his eyes for the very first time. I thought that maybe if I loved him hard enough, 
I could undo the damage his parents had caused. However, now I understand why they were the way they were about him. In just a few short weeks, he would become the nightmare his mother warned me about. He would become my nightmare, my darkness. A darkness that would follow me for the next 21 years. If only I'd heeded her warning. Maybe then, no, I can't say that because when I, what I went through only made me stronger despite it. I now know I had to go through what I went through to be the person I am today. Without the experiences of my past mistakes, I would never have grown into me. Once the rose-colored glasses come off, there is no turning back. Yes, it was hard for me, but it was the only way. I had to take the exact path I did to grow into the person I now am. Regrets be damned. My advice to anyone dating is this. Don't lo let love be your blind spot. If even their parents are telling you they're no good, then maybe you should take a closer look at the person they are. Love is blind, you know, but it doesn't have to be the death of you. If you find yourself compromising who and what you are to satisfy them, run. They're so not worth it. If you find that pieces of you are beginning to slip away, run. Never lose yourself in the name of love. Because that, my dear reader, is not love. And before you know it, there won't be anything left for anyone to love. When you look in the mirror and no longer recognize yourself, it's time to go. If you find yourself saying things like, I can change him. Run. No one needs a project. If you feel you must change him, again, he is not worth it. If he can't compromise on his own, there is no real love there. Love is blind, but sometimes, as I can attest, love just isn't enough. And that is the end of Chapter 5. We are getting into some good stuff here coming up. So, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so that you are notified of my next chapter in the future. Thank you, and you guys have a brilliant, lovely day.